Hi there, V from Movies Hunter at your service. Today I've got a real treat for you all. A film that's equal parts drama, mystery, and romance. I'm talking about the 2011 classic Sleeping Beauty, and let me tell you, it's a doozy. So let's begin. Lucy right here arrives at the lab where a researcher is eagerly waiting for his next guinea pig. I mean, research subject. Lucy joins the long list of people who have been convinced to undergo various painful experiments, all in the name of science. And what do they get in return? A few measly bucks to pay their rent and tuition fees. Lucy is no different, but despite the agony, she willingly continues with the experiments. After all, she has bills to pay and a degree to earn. As she leaves the lab, she heads to her university class trying to ignore the pain and focusing on her studies. But the day is not over yet. She then heads to her part-time job at a restaurant where she is a server who doesn't mind being treated like a servant. After a long day, she decides to unwind at a club where she meets a mysterious woman who convinces her to take some drugs. You know, just your typical night out. The party is just getting started. And two guys are trying to decide to get to have fun with Lucy. Instead of telling them to um, take a hike, she suggests a coin toss. And the winner is the boss. Congratulations. The next morning, Lucy wakes up to a brand new day filled with more struggles. Her sister's boyfriend, the self-proclaimed landlord, is demanding the overdue rent and reminding her that it's her turn to clean the bathroom. Because who doesn't love a little domestic chore after a long day at work? Lucy spends her day working at an office and balancing multiple part-time jobs all to earn a decent living. After a long day, she meets with Birdman, an alcoholic with a thing for her. Although she doesn't share the same feelings, she appreciates his company as he's the only one who can make her smile. So Lucy is on the hunt for some extra cash, and she comes across this ad in the newspaper that promises big bucks. Being the brave soul she is, she calls the number and sets up a personal interview. And of course, they tell her to wear a short dress because clearly that's an important factor in finding a job. She shows up to the mysterious address and meets Clara, who after checking her out, decides to hire her as a freelance waitress. But here's the catch. She will have to wear lingerie and serve drinks to private functions. And oh, yeah, she has to keep it a secret because nothing says respect job like wearing lingerie and keeping it in the down low. And to make things even more exciting, she'll be going through a medical exam and Thomas right here will inspect her body for tattoos. And the cherry on top, she'll be called Sarah for the job. Like a secret double life spy whatever and that's cool, I don't know. Lucy's getting ready for the job of a lifetime, or you know, the job of her nightmares. She heads to the salon for some much needed cosmetic pampering and a little grooming down below. Because let's face it, in this line of work, presentation is everything. She heads over to Birdman's place to practice her waitress skills, but she is keeping the real reason for her new look a secret. Of course, Birdman notices her freshly done nails and asks about it, but Lucy's keeping mum. After all, a girl's gotta keep some mystery. Later that night, she gets the call to get ready for her first night. A sleek car arrives to whisk her away to the party of the year. When she arrives at the mansion, she meets the boss of all the bosses, Sophie. She is the head of the waitresses and she means business. Lucy is instructed to get dressed and put on lipstick that matches the color of her... <coughs> I don't want to I don't, I don't say it. Lucy heads to the dressing room looking like a nervous wreck. She grabs a red lipstick and slathers it on her lips. <laughs> Sophie enters and takes one look at her. She gives Lucy a stirring lecture about taking the job seriously and not messing around. After all, Sophie checks the color of Lucy's L word to make sure the lipstick matches. No room for error here. Finally, they head to the dining room to prepare for the guests. Lucy stands out like a sore thumb dressed in a white outfit while all the other women are dressed in black lingerie that leaves very little to the imagination. The guests arrive and Lucy serves up the wine like a pro. Dinner is served and all the guests spend the rest of the night with the waitresses. As Lucy pours wine for the guests, she trips and falls in a hilarious yet dramatic scene. Feeling embarrassed, she apologizes, but the boss just pats her in the back and hands her her first payment of 250 bucks, telling her to call it a night. Dazed by the amount of money she just made, Lucy burns a note to double check if it's real or not. Fast forward to the next day and Lucy's employer finds her passed out in the office. That night, she returns for round two of her new job, but Sophie can sense that something was not quite right. In a moment of maternal care, she comforts Lucy, assuring her that she'll get used to the gig soon enough. 
The next morning, Lucy meets up with Birdman, who, in his usual manner, teases her about their running joke of asking her to marry him and he, her always saying no. But this time, in a surprising twist, Lucy pops the question and Birdman says yes. Later, Thomas calls her about a new job opportunity and she follows him to a luxurious mansion where she meets Clara. Before starting, Clara instructs Lucy to freshen up with a shower. Clara kindly reminds Lucy to drink her tea, aka the knockout juice, before tucking her into bed for a long nap. Because in her new job, sleeping naked while being cuddled by a strange man is just a normal day at the office. Clara, the fairy godmother of strange jobs, warns the lady's client that he can touch and caress her sleeping beauty, but there will be no fairy tale ending. And with that, Clara disappears in a puff of smoke, leaving the old man to strip down and snuggle up to the sleeping Lucy, because who doesn't love a good cuddle with a stranger, right? Back at home, Lucy finds a rent notice from her sister's boyfriend threatening to throw her out in two weeks if she doesn't pay up. But with her new job, she's raking in the dough, so she decides to upgrade to a fancy apartment where she, where she can live in peace. Or at least in peace without any annoying rent notices. Days go by and no calls from Clara, so Lucy turns to her trusty sidekick, Thomas, for for help finding a new client. Meanwhile, at the lab, she's a research subject by day and a sleeping beauty by night. Finally, Thomas comes through and sets up a new client for Lucy. She heads back to the mansion, ready for another nap with a stranger. Clara warns the latest client about the no penetration rule and off she goes. The man, feeling frisky, decides to light a cigarette and pull his neck to see if she's really asleep or just faking it. And because why not, he starts kissing her, oh, 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 gross. He starts kissing her all over her face. After the session, Lucy heads back home, noticing the burn on her neck but not giving it a second thought. Because she's got bigger problems to deal with like paying the rent and surviving this crazy world of sedated sleeping beauty jobs. Later, Lucy is in the middle of a class when she gets a call from Birdman, the love of her life. She rushes to his house and finds that he's taken a little too much of his pain medication. And as he's slowly dying in her arms, Birdman makes a final request that makes her question his sanity. He wants her to take off her top. Lucy, being the good friend she is obliges and lies beside him as he takes his final breath. At Birdman's funeral, Lucy meets her old flame who decides uh, to pop the question to, and she's like, hey, want to get married? She asks, hoping for a little bit of Birdman's playful banter to continue. But her ex, being the coolest guy he is, takes her words seriously and is shocked. He tells her that he is dating someone else now, someone who is obviously better than her. Ah, ah, ouch. Lucy's boss, Clara, brings in a new client who she instructs not to leave any marks on Lucy's body unless you consider bruises from a terrible massage to be considered marks. And unfortunately, her late night sessions are causing her to be late for her day job and she gets fired. Instead of getting sad, Lucy thanks her employer for the opportunity and walks out with her head held high. With Birdman gone, Lucy is feeling more alone than ever, but just when she thinks she'll be alone forever, a co-worker at the restaurant takes a liking to her and they end up spending the night together. Later, she gets a call from Thomas informing her about the new gig. Lucy, ever the curious one, decides she just has to see what goes down in Clara's fancy sleep therapy session, so she pops the question, Hey Clara, can I recall this session for posterity's sake? You know, for the history books? But Clara ain't having it, rolling her eyes and delivering the classic line, Oh honey, do you want to put all my clients at risk of being blackmailed? I don't think so. So Lucy takes her sedatives and hits the hay, but before she drifts off into dreamland, she does the unthinkable. She sets up a hidden camera. Next thing she knows, Clara is bringing in a new client, and wouldn't you know it, it's the same client from Lucy's first session. He downs his sleeping tea with a hearty gulp and boom, out like light. The next morning, Clara breezes in, checks the poor guy's pulse, and realizes he's met his maker. But Clara's not even phased because, you know, she saw it coming. She then tries to revive a still sleeping Lucy who's taken one too many sips of the tea. But after some good old-fashioned mouth-to-mouth resuscitation, she comes back to the land of the living, screaming her head off at the sight of the dearly departed gentleman next to her. And the film ends with a nail-biting reveal of what the hidden camera captured. The dead old man and Lucy both lying peacefully together in bed, just like a real-life Sleeping Beauty tale, but with a dark twist, of course. And so, my loves, this was the story of Sleeping Beauty. See you in the next hunt. I love you.